Okay. So this is the uh, this is the kill room. Okay, so let me just ask you something. Should we? So she can just hang in there for a bit. <laughs> Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. That's really tasty. I'm Dawn O'Porter. I'm British, but I'm living in New York. And I'm fascinated by the amount of different religions here. All these different neighborhoods that are dedicated to those religions and their food. I've been hearing a lot about halal on the restaurant scene recently, but I don't really know an awful lot about what it is. I understand that it's a religious thing that's about to slit an animal's throat. It doesn't sound more humane to me, it actually sounds quite brutal, but I am still learning, so I still may be convinced that it's the right way. So I'm here in wonderful New York City, and I'm going to find out as much as I can about Islamic belief and food. I'm starting off here at the Halal Guys, a food truck in New York that I've heard is crazy popular and people are willing to stand in line for hours just to get a plate of their food. So this is amazing. I it is. Hugh goes on for miles. Yes. I see you've got We Are Different written on the back of the t-shirts. What does that mean? Why? We are different than anyone else. Yes, there's so many halal food around, but it's only one Halal Guys in the whole entire United States and that's us. They almost try to claim they are with the Halal Guys. Oh, so there's people dressing up and pretending to be you guys? Exactly, exactly. Like right there, across the street, if you take a look, yeah. right there, it is people wearing yellow. Yeah. Oh, right. It is. That's why we say we are different than anyone else. I was looking up and down the queue, and it doesn't look like everybody's Muslim, so is this not just well, for halal eaters? Yes, that's what the success about it. And we're so proud to be the first people who did introduce the halal meal to the community. And now, as you look at the line, you know, almost 95% of our customers are non-Muslim. That's amazing. It is. So what is halal? Halal is the food are permitted under Islamic guideline. And once the meat become halal, it's up to us how to cook it and how to introduce it to the people. Do you think the halal meat tastes better? It, it definitely tastes better. In what way? First, it's very healthy because the procedure, the meat go through, so it's, you know, clean. And the way we prepare it, we, we cook it in a way it's very healthy. It's, it's not that, you know, yes, once you come to the white sauce, that's a different story. But <laughs> Your it, secret white well, sauce. It is. Will you tell me what's in your white sauce? <laughs> no, no. It's a base mayonnaise, but the rest I can't say. Okay. But it's, you know, indeed, it is a great taste. I feel like I need to try that. Dish. Sure, I'd be, I'd be more than happy to introduce you. I need some of this magic white sauce. Sure, sure, no problem, no problem. Here is your plate. Oh. So. Is the, is the magic white sauce That's in there? That's the magic white sauce Thank right you. there. How many times a week do you eat this? Uh, well, I could say about four times a week. Do you? You're not yeah. bored of it? You can tell no, me the truth. No, 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 no. Well, this, this hot sauce, I don't mm. think you, you want to try it. I love hot sauce. It, it's extremely hot. Go for it. Just give it a try. All right? Mm -hmm. If you like more, we could add more, but I mean, the hot sauce, it is very I've got a hot. bit of everything on there. Yes. That's really tasty. Uh, you know, that's what I said. Well, if you understand. Do you warn people before they put that oh, on Yes, we have a sign. <laughs> <laughs> that's delicious. It is, it is. So what have I got in here? I've got rice. Yes, I've got you chicken. have in the plate, you have its rice and salad and the chicken, or the lamb, or a combination. Lovely orange rice. Yes. Is this the most popular? Yes. It's really tasty. It is. I understand the well, I understand that's, the what, that's what makes us different, and that's why we say we are different, and that's why we're rated number one in the United States. We're planning to take this to the rest of the United States. You're taking over. You're taking over the country. <laughs> Everyone's going to be eating this on every street corner. We're doing, we're doing our best. Wonderful. Well, I love it. Thank you so I'm much. Glad, I'm glad you love it. So what do I do next? Who do I speak to next to learn more about food and Islam? The best way to learn more about halal is to go to the mosque and speak to the imam. And that's the best source to explain and get all your question answered as far as halal. Okay, I'll, do, I'll take it next. Sure, try it. <laughs> I don't think there's going to be anything left by no, the time no, I get there. No. <laughs> I'm 
here at the Ahul Bayat Mosque in Brooklyn. I'm going to be speaking to an imam who's going to teach me exactly what halal food is and also how important food is in the Muslim culture. And now I don't know much about the Muslim culture yet, but what I do know is that I have to cover my hair. I'm very good, how are you? Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. So I have many questions for you. No problem, we have the answer for you. I want to know what the main rules of Islam are. It is uh, believe in God, and believe in the hereafter, and believe in the messengers all. Muhammad is the last messenger. And then you have to uh, pray and fast. And this is the main matters. So what is the process of halal? The process of halal food. First, what kind of animals you are allowed to eat. We are not allowed to eat uh, the pork, okay? Not uh, all the animals. For example, the sheep is allowed. Now, when you take the sheep, okay, the guy who uh, slaughtered the sheep, he has to be a believer, believe in God. When he slaughtered the sheep, he has to mention the name of God. When you, the animals hear the word of God, it will be so easy for you to, to slaughter the animals. This is one of the important things. Second thing, he has to also face, the, put the animals facing the Mecca, and Masjid al-Haram, the great mosque which built by the Prophet Ibrahim. Beside that, when the, you uh, slaughter it in the way, all the blood which is in the animals inside, it will go out. That's very important and necessary to keep the animals healthy and they clean. So all the blood is drained out of the animal? Sure. When meat is consumed, there's just no blood in the meat at no all? No blood, yeah. So you're very healthy? Sure. Not just healthy, tasty too. And Halal is very kind to the animals? Sure. We were created because of the love of God. Okay? And that love has to save it. Okay, and we have to love God and whatever God loves. That is the real Islam. Do you think I would learn something from going to a halal slaughterhouse? Sure. When you go to, uh, to the uh, slaughtering house and you see, look, how they slaughtered, okay, and how they deal with the animals in the very nice way, okay, animals feel comfortable because God created them to slaughter. I'm a little worried about that when I see. They will enjoy when you slot them in the, uh, in the, for the purpose. Okay, they will enjoy it. Don't worry about it. Okay. I'm here at the slaughterhouse. Um, I can smell it from here, um, and it's not a nice smell, and I don't know if it's death or just animal, but it's grim. So I'm going to see how they actually slaughter an animal halal style, and I bought myself this jumper in case I get splattered with blood. <laughs> Hi. Hi. How's it going? I'm um, good. I'm Dawn. How are you? Imran. Pleasure. Nice to meet you. So, uh, the smell is... It's pretty, pretty potent, yeah. yeah. That's, uh, that's the smell of the birds and all the animals. I usually get that reaction, or the other reaction I get is, reminds me of my grandmother's farm. Oh, so, really? Yeah. So where did they all come from, then? All our birds are all coming from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Amish, Mennonite farms, also saw some small family farms. Our livestock are coming from New Jersey, Montville, New Jersey. Very local. Very local. We keep everything as local as possible for various reasons. We want to limit how far they travel. You know, so they get here and they're not stressed out. Mm -hmm. They're in optimal health because they do spend the day here, so we want to make sure they're as healthy as possible. And that's also critical in, uh, in halal food, too. So halal is about, as far as I knew, the process of killing the animal, but really it's about how they're treated up well, to that yeah, moment. Well, yeah, halal is a lifestyle. So halal literally translates to what's lawful, what's permissible. So. It deals with one, where my animals come from, are they given sufficient food, water, are they treated humanely? And also, how I conduct my business. Do I treat the animals properly? 
Do I conduct my business properly? Am I honest? Am I sincere? So halal is not just a slaughtering process, but it's the whole gamut of life itself. Just um, making sure that everything is treated well. Absolutely. So now tell me exactly what halal is, the actual slaughter. The zabia halal, when we're talking about food, that's the actual process. So the process of slaughtering is picking out a, a chicken or a goat or lamb and then doing the, the zabia which is the actual ritual of, uh, of slaughter. We cut the trachea, esophagus, and jugular veins, allow it to entirely bleed out. Um, so how long does it actually take to slaughter? Uh, just moments. This is why we call it a, a pick your own slaughterhouse. You pick it, we slaughter it, process it, and we give it back to you within 10 minutes. And that's also what's great about this fresh kill. You get to be part of the whole process from literally beginning picking out your animal, slaughtering it, saying that prayer, and knowing that it's gonna be put to good use and sharing it with the people you love. So that's what makes it even taste sweeter, as they say. I'll uh, be happy to show you. I'm not sure I could actually watch. You know what, it's, I think it'll be a good experience. I, I like to recommend people see, you know, it's easy to eat because most people have become desensitized to their food. You know, buy a package of chicken, you mess up how you the recipe, throw it out, go to the grocery store and get another one. Because you're not thinking, you've broken away from what that, that, that piece of meat you're eating was before. At one point it was a living being. And so it's just, just remembering. Um, I'll do my best. Okay. I don't still... know how I'll do, I'm just warning you. It, it, not a problem. I might, I might not be able to watch. <coughs> Let's pick a nice, healthy <laughs> All right, beautiful bird. Okay. So this is the uh, this. this is the kill room. Okay, so let me just ask you something. Should we? So she can just hang in there for a bit. <laughs> yep. Um, it'll hang out here until it's ready for slaughter, because it's really important that you know there are a couple things of rules that apply to halal. One, the the prayer. And um, what is it that you say? So there's you can use any verse from the uh, Quran um, that invokes God's name. What we do here, uh, we say Bismillah, Allah, Akbar, and that means in the name of God, God is merciful. Right. But prior to that, it's important that you know one animal doesn't see another one being slaughtered. Really? Number one. Number two, it's important never to sharpen your knife in the sight of, a, of an animal. And then we uh, and cut, then exactly. cut through the jugular. Cut through the jugular, trachea, esophagus, and then we put it in these cones over here, and gravity draws all the blood out. And once it's completely bled out, then yeah, we continue the process. So. So now I'm going to do the zabia, which is I'm going to invoke God's name by saying Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, cut the throat, trachea, esophagus, and jugular, and then put it inside the cone so that it can bleed out. Okay. I'm going to do that now. Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. Um, so as soon as I, I drew the blood, uh, drew the knife over the uh, the throat, I cut the trachea, esophagus. Why is it still moving? Why well, the nerves are going to continue moving. So even after it's even after it's been dispatched, it'll continue moving for a little bit. But it's dead. It's dead. What's going on right now? Those are the nerves twitching, and it's going to continue like that for a little bit. Even though the animal's dead, the nerves are still going. I have to say, I'm really. Um kind of amazed by how I feel about this way of slaughtering because yeah. I didn't know sure. um, and it feels so humane and it feels sure. so personal for each chicken I think Absolutely. the fact that the uh, another chicken can't watch what happens to another one or sure. have a knife sharpened in front Absolutely. of it is like what more could you want for the Absolutely. animal thank you for letting me be thank here you. I have to get some air Absolutely. <laughs> um, I invite, I'd love for you to come over and have uh, dinner with my family. Thank you so That'd much. That'd be amazing. And I'd love to. Thank you so much. I will, see, I will see you at dinner. I just have to get some air. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. you <laughs> I mean, that was... <laughs> you know, actually, how that was. I did not think that I was going to stay in there while the animal was being killed. But when he said to me, I think it's important that, understand, that people understand where the animals come from and people disregard meat. And I thought the amount of times that I've had chicken in my fridge that I've thrown away because I haven't eaten it, and I haven't even thought about the fact that that's come from this animal, made me think the least I can do is experience what happens to these animals. And 
it really did feel so humane and so personal and so um, respectful to the chicken. And, you know, the next time I have chicken, I'm really going to be grateful to that chicken <laughs> and think about where it came from and appreciate it probably a lot more than I ever have before. I didn't enjoy that experience, but I'm really glad I had it. Oh, and I got a dinner date out of it, so it's pretty awesome. So this is my first Muslim family dinner. I don't know anybody apart from one person, but I'm sure it won't be too awkward. Come on in. This Thank is you. my father. Hello, how are you? How are you, dear? Lovely you? to meet you. My name's Dawn. Pleasure. Lovely to meet you. He started the, uh, the slaughterhouse that you were at. Oh, so you, you started the whole thing? Yes, I started, yeah. It's very nice to meet you. Let me introduce you, you to, to everybody. This is Dazmim. Uh, Hi, how are you? My, Lovely to meet my you. My brother-in-law. Hi, Your nice brother -in -law. Hi. This is the matriarch of the family, my mother. Lovely that. to meet oh, you. Hello. Hello. Thank my you so much Natalie. for having me. As you can see, came just in time. We're prepping dinner. I can't and... tell you how excited I am about this food. <laughs> uh, Especially because I feel so involved in the food, having just experienced what I've experienced. Absolutely. I'm sure you'll uh, Great. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Yeah, this is uh, chicken kurma over rice. Oh, wow. And we can... Uh... You know, it's really nice knowing where the chicken came from. Absolutely. Absolutely. As morbid and gruesome as it may seem, mm. This is the end result, and this is, you know, yeah. something beautiful. So. Well, you know, there's, there's houses all over the world right now eating meat with no idea where that meat came from. And look mm -hmm. at us, we know exactly where. So exactly. I think this is awesome. Subhanaka Rabbi Garabbi Lizzatiya Mahiya Sibun Wa Salamun Allah Mursaleen Wa Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Amen. That's the food Allah gave us. Thank you and enjoy and have a happy. Thank you very much. Let's dig in. This is, uh, this is goat, this is beef, that's chicken tandoori, chicken kurma, salad, uh, uh, pulao with uh, peas, uh, samosa, naan. And also you have fish over here too. So why do you think the restaurants that um, don't need to serve halal meat buy halal meat from you? Because um, it's a higher quality product. Um, so what? which restaurants do you supply? Uh, so I'm proud to say we supply Amwell Steakhouse with poultry. We supply Fedora in the West Village. We supply Left Bank in the West Village. We supply uh, Cafe Clooney. We supply, yeah, Green Table in Chelsea Market. But yeah, it's picking up and it's I haven't even marketed myself. It's just word of mouth. As big as the industry may seem, it's actually very close-knit. A lot of people know each other. I'm sure, yeah. And so word gets around pretty quickly. Well, hopefully after this, everyone's gonna do it. Thank you very Honestly, much. Honestly, I've really, I've been really amazed. I've Thank had you. such a great time and I really didn't think I would. Awesome. In this afternoon, so I really appreciate awesome. it. Thank you. You're welcome. This is all perfect. Like it? It's the real deal. There's going to be a lot of leftovers. <laughs> Definitely. See the picture? See how I look? Oh, oh my <laughs> goodness me. <laughs> what a handsome couple. Oh man, I should take this to the, to the mask. And I can draw. This is not a real, this is some more hair. So. That's amazing. Look yeah. at you both. You're beautiful. Nice. Now you see, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> it happens to the best of them. <laughs> That's amazing. So what I've learned is that there are a lot of rules when it comes to food in Islam, but they're mostly about respect and peace. They worship God, they respect the human body, but they also respect their animals, and that's what halal is. And I wasn't expecting to have got a positive experience from going to a slaughterhouse at all, but I did. And I think I'm going to really respect where my food comes from from now on. This food was just insane. Um, can I have a doggy bag? Of course. Thanks. <laughs>